Most High loves everybody. Most High loves everybody. Oh yeah, I love it. This is off. Chapter 145. Let me start at 8. This is off. Chapter 145 and 8. The, the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, actually, we, we use a, a, a number of scriptures to prove that, brother. We go one right okay. Here. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, we might go this one. We're we pulling out right now. This Psalm, chapter 145, and verse 8. The Lord, Yahweh, by Shimei, was shy, is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord, Yahweh, by Shimei, was shy, is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Yeah, he's good to all, and his tender mercies are, are over all his works. Even in the Egypt. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. one to prove it. I got one to prove it. Just, yeah, in Romans 9, it, it says, says it. I got one. I got you. Well, we, we'll let the scripts talk. I got one. Okay. Yeah, It's Amos chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus said the Lord, Yehovah, Simeon, I was for three transgressions of Moab, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into line. So the Most High, he, he loved it. God, God. So if, if the Most High hated Esau, why would he still be retributing Moab for uh, burning, 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 uh, burning their bones into line? Wouldn't uh, they just be uh, collateral damage? You know what I'm saying? Or if they're just a drop in the book? Yeah, God, that, that's nothing. They have a father, but he still got a retribution. They act though. Because uh -huh. what? Because he fucked with Edom. Yeah. He's like, what? Well, you just burned the king, the bones of the king of Edom to that's line. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Why, why, if he well, hates him, why would he care? Why would he, well, yeah, why would he, why would he so, even think so twice about it? Let me ask you this. What about scripture? The Obadiah said that the house of Esau shall be destroyed. What about what we just brought out of uh, Sirach 47 and 22, where it said he would not uh, destroy the prosperity of his leg or destroy any of his works? Yeah. So what about that? So well, that would be well, a contradiction. We know, we know through the prophecy now that the scripture is there. We can't. The spirits are never. No spirits are there. So what about 47? What he just said, though, it's a contradiction. Yeah, we got to break down to Rock 47 and 22, though. It yeah, says, he so wanna, bring back to Rock 47 and 22. Or, or Psalms. Let's go back to Rock 47 and 22, I'm, I'm not trying to argue with them. I just want to know about Obadiah. That's what I'm saying. Well, we, okay, we can't break down. Precept must be read upon precept. Sirach okay, 47 is 22. 22. So, we got, so we got to break this down first. But the Lord will never leave off his mercy. Neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. So how is that? How, if none of his works That's is going to perish, but Esau is going to be done away with. Yeah. It said it's a, it was a comma. No, break, 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 says, but the down. Lord will never leave off his mercy. Neither shall any of his works perish. Come. So you okay? So you saying Esau is part of his works too? Right? He's part of his works. Is but, he not? But, but, <laughs> yeah, is. Okay. Who else made him? Okay, but uh, Psalm seventeen you say that Esau is a sword and a deadly sword. They don't say Esau in Psalm seventeen. They say the wicked, the, the wicked are sort of wicked. Who is the wicked? The wicked. The wicked. That's the question. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on and glory to. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, back with another quick lesson. Lord willing to edify and defeat the lambs of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash. Lord willing, this is edifying strength to the point. Now I played the clip in, his, in the intro of this video, which was done by um, the elder brother Karataza out there in Vegas, and I was watching. I also watched Apostle Tar did a response to his video about these two guys right here. All right, pretty much they saying that Esau can make it. All right, they saying that God don't hate 
Well, yeah, you said God loves everybody. They say God loves everybody. God doesn't hate Esau. And God is not going to destroy Esau. And then, you know, on top of it, this guy, you know, these guys got the nerve to say, um, to quote the scripture in Isaiah 28 saying precept must be upon precept. Line upon line, here a little, there a little. And that's how you understand the scriptures. All right, that's how you connect the scriptures with one, one precept to the next precept. Now, if you read the precept or if you read a scripture or a verse the way they did, then it, then the your understanding is not going to be, you know, too, you know, too clear if the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you. You know, but if the Spirit is dealing with you, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, then you would understand the scriptures based off of going precept upon precept. Now, if you just read a scripture saying that the Lord is not going to destroy the works of his hand, even in that scripture, it mentions um, the elect and it mentions Israel. Or I believe it just mentions the elect, which I'm going to go into that. But if you just read it like that for face value, without knowing other precepts or without going precept upon precept, you know, then you're not going to understand. And clearly, you know, these guys are new, novice. All right. Never seen them before. Never heard of them. All right. But. As a novice, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta eat, uh, drink the milk. All right, drink the milk. Like the scriptures say, "Whom shall he teach wisdom? They that are drawn from the breast." All right, and wean from the, um, drawn from the breast and wean, wean with the milk. Roughly paraphrasing. All right, now, like I said, um, you see in the introduction, or the four, or the four minute clip, of this video, and I'm gonna get some of the scriptures that they pulled up, and go precept upon precept, which is what. They should have done. And if they had done it, they would have understood that the Lord ain't coming to save everybody. All right. Uh, first, I'm going to start with. um. First, let me get this. Second Peter, chapter two, verse one. It said, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. All right. And that's those are false teachers because that's the same thing like um, Bubba or Rakai from GOCC teaches that Esau can make it. Or that Esau is going to make it. He's going to be like a butler. You know, he's going to be like a, a just a regular regular servant. Like how Jake is a regular servant, got a regular job. But they're under, you know, under um, rulership. No, it ain't going to be like that. The scriptures tell you that, you know, Esau is going to be into, into in, in bondage and slavery. All right. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All right, the way the same way we came into captivity under hardcore bondage is the same way Esau is going to go into captivity under hardcore bondage. All right, twofold. Okay, the scripture says it's a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So how how Esau troubled us and these other nations, they're going to be troubled as well. All right, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So it says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, which is false teachers among us right now. All right, and those two guys were, were were examples, or are examples. It says, "Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies?" All right, so they teaching things that are contrary to the doctrine. You know, we clearly Esau, you know, cannot make it. You know, and, and like the brothers on um, the title of his video, "Beware of these plants." All right, beware of these plants arising and bringing in heresies. Now, for all we know, Esau could set these guys up. You know, Esau could set up a whole bunch of people. Whole bunch of you know so-called brothers, you know, make you know have the appearance of a brother, a Hebrew Israelite brother, you know, saying a salute like we do, and deceiving, you know, the, the sheep. All right, deceiving the sheep. That that's the job. That's what Esau is going to set these guys up to do. All right, whether you know whether it's Esau, the in, Esau's intelligence, you know, the intel's behind it, or whether it's just a spiritual demon Satan that jumped on these guys. To start teaching that Esau could be saved. Alright, so beware these plants. You know what I'm saying? Um, like the brother said in the title of his lesson, like what he was getting into. So it says, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bringing, bring and bring upon themselves swift destruction. At least they repent. What's coming? Swift destruction. Alright, swift destruction is coming upon gods like that. And many shall follow their pernicious, pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil, evil spoken of. So really they speaking evil of the doctrine by saying that Esau can make it because we don't teach that. 
All right? We don't teach that. We The, the doctrine that we teach through Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, through the Holy Spirit, is a perfect doctrine. All right? That's why the apostle, to all, you know, boldly, through the Spirit and all humility, say that we believe or we have 100% truth. All right? That we have 100% truth because if there's any any portion or a little drop of lies in the doctrine, then it's no longer the truth anymore. All right? Now it's contaminated. So these guys are pretty much con trying to contaminate the doctrine, which they won't be able to. And that's why the Lord set up the true shepherds to, you know, uh, warn the sheep when the, when the wolf come. Okay, so um, this is one of the scriptures he brought up. Psalms 145 and verse 8. And one, see, one thing about these people, like especially these Christians, these Edomites, we understand that when they went, you know, they... Anything about mercy, love, and compassion, they, they think it's everybody. All right? They think it's everybody. But as a Hebrew Israelite, somebody that's in the know, you should know that, you know, when the scriptures pertain to mercy, compassion, all right, and, and things of that nature, is only referring to Israelites. That's, that's Israelite one-on-one. -on -one. So verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies. Are over all his works. And they took that and said that. The Lord is going to have mercy on Esau. Alright. And then this guy says that. Well it was whoever the guy was talking to. He brought up um, Obadiah. And then the guy to the left. Said that well then that would be a contradiction. And that's why it's important to understand. Precept upon precept. Alright because the Lord, the Lord is only going to have mercy. On the children of Israel. All right, those that are going to wake up to um to the nationality. All right, starting with the elect. All right, and then ultimately the rest of Israel. This is on Isaiah fourteen and one. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers, which this strangers is not talking about, Israel. Um, excuse me. Um, Edomites or or any other particular. Um, nation This is talking about Israelites Alright It says The strangers shall be joined with them And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob Alright Now Real quick let me do this I'm gonna put mercy And Esau Excuse me Let's see what come up None comes up Of course none is gonna come up Which I already knew that but of course none was gonna come up. Mercy Esau or um Mercy Esau or Mercy Mercy Edom. Alright, it says Hordums, not Edoms. Or Edom. Alright. Um Let's put Esau or Edom elect. Let's put Esau Elect Let's put Esau Chosen Let's put Esau <laughs> Or Edom Chosen You get the picture You see You see exactly You know what's going on Now let's put Israel Excuse me I'll put two O's so you know what? Let me, even though I know they ain't gonna show it, let me just do that for. It says Hordoms again. So you get the picture. Ain't no mercy coming for Esau. All right, Jacob. Scriptures are gonna come up. Jacob, chosen one. Uh, Jacob, the children of Jacob, his chosen. For the Lord have chosen Jacob unto Himself. And Israel is for his peculiar treasure. That's on Psalms 135 and verse 4. Isaiah 48, 41 and 8. But thou Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Come on. It says, yet now, yet now, here, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. And it, and it goes on. And it goes on. I'm going to put Israel chosen. Alright, the Bible does not contradict itself. 
And those men, you know, like, like we, you know, we were, upon Star's videos, um, video, last video, I believe it says, um, uh, beware of spies, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. All right. First Chronicles 16, 13, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Like, come on, this is going to say the same thing over and over again. All right. It's going to say the same thing. So again, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers, which the strangers are talking about the Israelite foreigners, all right? All right? The Israelites that are going to wake up to this truth. Because only Israelites are going to be joined to the house of Israel. To be joined means to be one. All right? Just for example, it made me think of just like how you got the um the 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 graft the wild olive tree that was grafted in. All right? It was joined to the tree, to the whole tree, which is the house of Israel. It says, and they shall cleave to the house of Israel. When you cleave on to something, you hold on to something. All right, you hold on to something. Okay, this is um. This is another scripture you brought up, Ecclesiastes chapter forty-seven, verse twenty twenty-two. It says, "But the Lord will never leave off His mercy; neither shall any of His works perish." All right, he said, and he used this to say that um, the Lord is not gonna, because Esau is part of the Lord's work, and is not gonna perish. Well, the scriptures cut that. That's why it's important to go precept upon precept. It said, but the Lord will, lead not, will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the prosperity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him will he not take away. Wherefore he gave a remnant unto Jacob and, unto, and out of him a root unto David. Now this whole thing is talking about Israelites, all right? The whole entire thing is talking about Israelites. Okay, like, like it says, they got a couple scriptures on. Um, um, Malachi 1 and 1. I mean, one, yeah, 1 and 1. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel, to Malachi, I have loved you, save the Lord yet. All right, I have loved you, save the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother save the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. Jacob is the only one that's loved. And I hated Esau. This is Israelite 101. That's why, that's why I tell this video is unbelievable. Alright? Unbelievable. That, that's all I could think of to tell this video. is just unbelievable. It says, Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith we are impoverished but we will return and build the, uh, the desolate places. Save the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall cast, uh, excuse me, they shall call them the board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation for forever. All right, what does it mean? Indignation, that righteous anger. Okay. So uh, let me go back real quick. Ecclesiastes 47, 22. It says, but the Lord will never leave, leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish. Now you now again, the Bible does not contradict itself. Let's go to Romans, the ninth chapter. It says, therefore he had mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hardeneth. Thou will say unto them, excuse me, let me read it again. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will hardeneth. As it says up above that the Lord uh, hardened Pharaoh's heart. Let me, read it. Let me read that actually. It says verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Just like Esau. Esau was raised up for the same reason. Alright. It says that I may show my power in thee. That my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And it have been. All right, it have been, and this is the only time where the name Israel, this captivity was the only time the name Israel was ever forgotten. Like the Lord told Jeremiah that he would discontinue from his heritage. When Jeremiah died, he knew he was an Israelite. So, so obviously, that's another thing you got to understand is reincarnation. So, you know, how else would he discontinue from his heritage? He would have, he would have to come back and not at some point in time and not know that he was an Israelite until in the latter days he's raised up and know that he's an Israelite. All right, same with all of us. We all forgot our nationality, our heritage. It says, therefore, he hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will hardeneth. 
Thou wilt say then unto me, Why do why doth he yet find fault? Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing framed say to him that framed it? Why hast thou made me thus? That is the point. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor? All right, so that the, the potter, the person who potters and fashion clay could take the same lump, the same lump of clay, and on the left-hand side, he could make something that, that he really don't care about. You know, which for whatever reason, it's his own, it's his purpose, it's his will. He could do what he want with it. And on the, with the same lump on the right, he could fashion something nice and glorious and set it up as a monument or ornament for himself. And that's what the Lord did to the nation of Israel. And to the nation of Edom, he made them up for destruction. To, just to destroy them. Okay? Why? Because he could do that. So, it says, what if God willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known endure with much long suffering the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction so the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction is talking about the so called white man Esau Edom alright 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 it says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except they come a falling away first and that, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition alright the, the man of sin is talking about Esau Edom alright the falling away happened when we fell away as a nation Forgot who we were as 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 a, a nationality, like I quoted in Jeremiah 17. All right, we forgot who we were, but the Lord woke us up in these latter days. So that's how we know that that day is coming soon. What day? The coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah. If you, if you read verse one. All right, so we know that day is coming soon, but before it had, before it came, the man of sin had to be revealed, according to as it is written. All right, it's written throughout the scriptures about this man being revealed. All right, the Lord, you you know, all the scriptures pertaining to Babylon, okay, pertaining to Esau, Edom. All these scriptures have to come to pass. So now is the time he's being revealed. The son of perdition. And the word perdition means destruction. All right, Esau was, was, was created to be destroyed, point blank period. All right. So I'm going to read that again. Ecclesiasticus 47. And 22, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy for Israel. Neither shall any of his works perish, all right, for Israel, all right, because for one, America is going to be destroyed, all right? America is going to perish. America, Babylon the Great, as we know it, is going to perish. It's not, would that not be considered, like he said, would, would Esau not be considered work of the Lord? But America is going to be destroyed, all right? But the, guess what? The Lord put the spirit on, on these Edomites to establish America as it is today. All right, by the blood, sweat, and tears of the nation of Israel. But this land, this land that we're sitting on, standing on, called America, will perish. All right? Neither will he abolish the prosperity of his elect. Just showing you that this is talking about all, all of Israel. All right? It says, and, and the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away Israel, the elect. Wherefore he gave a remnant unto Jacob... And out of him a root of, uh, unto David, which is talking about who? Yahweh Shah. All right? It's talking about Yahweh Shah. All right? He's the root of David. You can read um, um, the book of um, uh, Matthew chapter 1. It gives the whole genealogy of Yahweh Shah. Okay? And there's many scriptures when he, was, when he was referred to as the seed of David or the son of David or the root of David. Um, I believe uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, the, the root of David, the conquering lion out of the tribe of Judah. All right. The book of Joel, chapter three, verse two. I'll start at one. For behold, in those days and in that time when I when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the Lord's heritage is Israel. And I believe, let me see something real quick. Um, it was a scripture that that I had pinpointed. Oh yeah, Micah 7 and 18. Alright. Cause why 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 is World War 3 ultimately gonna pop off? 
And guess who's going to be destroyed in the midst of this World War III? Esau, Edom. Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. That's Israelite one-on-one. -on -one. All right? And then Esau is going to go into captivity. So how the hell God, God is going to love everybody? Esau have, I, Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved. Again, Israelite one-on-one. -on -one. That's why Tyler's video is called Unbelievable. You know, sometimes the shit that Jake says sometimes is unbelievable, but you we bring it out for the for the for the sheep, all right? For the sheep, those that are now coming into the fold, brand new, because anything could be a stumbling block to somebody that's brand new. Anything could be a stumbling block to anybody, but like for somebody that's brand new, now hearing the word for the first time, and then they might they may stumble across that video, they may be they may get confused. So that's why it's our job to warn the sheep of these damn um these wolves in sheep clothing. So, uh, Micah 7 and 18, it says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? All right? Hold on. That pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. All right? Hold on. That pardon iniquity. All right? Pardon iniquity. All right? Pardon iniquity. Psalms 145, the scripture he brought up. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great mercy. Great of mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Okay? Let's read that again. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? So the only the only transgression that the Lord is gonna is gonna wink at is the transgression of the remnant of his heritage, which is the elect. Right? Because on this side, two thirds, they're gonna have to suffer and die. And be born again in the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and these two guys, they 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 fall into the category of the two-thirds by teaching that Esau can make it. Alright? It says, He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. For who? For who? Now let's read verse 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. What well, is that talking about Esau too? Because it says us. Who's who's speaking? Michael. Prophet Michael, all right. And when we read these letters to each other, these books, these uh, the epistles, the prop, the books of the prophets, it's it's for us. It's for us, all right. You reading that? You reading the scriptures like you were Edomite, trying to trying to apply Esau in it. Mercy is only for the house of Israel. So he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will perform. Let me read this part right here. It says, Thou will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. So the, the promise was to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. All right. And it's being performed in, in Jacob right now. But then you got numbskulls trying to bring Esau in. Well, they're going to be found out. <laughs> they're going to be find, found out, man. When he's, you know, you ain't getting no grounding poised by trying to, you know, bring Esau in this. Esau, no damn well he can't make it. And he ain't going to make it. You know, you saw no damn well he ain't gonna make it. But you got these man, unbelievable. Ezekiel thirty nine and twenty two. Lower in the here, it says, "So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their power from the day, from that day and forward, and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies." So shall so fell they by um excuse me so fell they all by the sword. Who's our enemies? Those that had us in captivity, starting with Esau, Edom, Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight. According to the uncleanness and according to their transgression, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. So why do we go into captivity for our iniquity? All right, for our iniquity. Point blank. Period. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord Power, Yahweh, by Shem Shai. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy. Upon the whole house of Israel, and will be will be jealous, and will be jealous for my holy name. How the Lord gonna be jealous for His holy name when He execute vengeance upon these other nations? All right, why? Because the Lord could do that. All right, He could do that. He said He's gonna do it, and He's gonna do it. All right, one vessel for honor, one vessel for dishonor. Now the vessel for dishonor, you know, boasted against you know the vessel of honor, you know, and 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 you know. Brought down, you know, brought down the captivity. The scriptures say, he that touched you, touched the apple of my eye. So we we are the apple in the, in the Lord's eye. In other words, we're precious in his eyes. So all them nations that have part in dealing with us are going to go into captivity. All right? 
The only thing he's gonna be safe, the only thing Esau is gonna be saved for is for the sword and for slavery. Alright, and then for save for that for that um pit, that pit fire. Alright, and Obadiah they, um the first chapter, the whole well, the whole is only one chapter, but in the book of Obadiah. It says, um, after that they have borne their shame, and their all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid, because we carried our shame. Oh, you know, we carry our shame. Like the scriptures say that um that our punishment is accomplished. All right, Lamentation 4 and 21, Isaiah 40 and 1. It says our punishment, the Lord was going to pardon our iniquity and his pardon. That's the mercies, all right? That's the works of his hand, all right? On the righteous side, the Lord, the Lord got a, that would be, again, the, 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 pot of, the pot is vessel. You got the, the work on the left-hand side, which was created just to be destroyed, to, to teach us a lesson. But the Lord is still going to destroy it. And that's, that is the work of his hand. But the Lord is going to destroy it. Now, when, when the scriptures say he's not going to destroy the works of his hand, it's obviously talking about the, the, the Israelites, okay? That's the works of his hand that he's not going to destroy. Excuse me, destroy. So again, you know, it's unbelievable, man. But um, um, verse twenty-seven said, "When I brought them again from the people and gathered them from um, gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations." Then shall they know that I am the Lord their power, which causes them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, save the Lord power, Yahweh by Shemel The Lord ain't coming to save everybody. The Lord don't love everybody. So any Israelite group teaching that, man, all right, they they of the devil. All right. They got the spirit of Satan on them. And that's point blank period. Any Israelites. Teaching what these guys are teaching. They got the spirit of Satan on them. Alright. These two guys got the spirit of Satan on them. Alright. This is the brother's video. And this is the page of these guys right there. You can see it. Karath Israel. Alright. If you want to go go look at it. But I ain't looking at it. I see. You know. I caught this brother's page. Um, His video. I watched his video. I watched Apostle Hall's video. And I, I screen recorded the first clip. Um, of this video So you know Lord willing This was edifying Straight to the point Till next time I say Shalom to the elect Shalom